Baker, and I'm Heather Connolly. A Tragedy of Errors, America's Hypocritical Reaction to Artistic Diplomacy. Fall 2012. Hello, everyone. Wow, it's been a long time since anyone stopped to listen to me. Well, anyway, you're here now. And if you don't mind, I'd love to tell you my story. That's me, Subway Exit by Luke Scoblin. I'm part of, well, actually, my story doesn't really start with me. It starts with a new kind of war. In the late 1940s, the Cold War revolutionized our very definition of war. Rather than fighting with bullets and bombs, the United States government was faced with the task of capturing the hearts and minds of intellectual intellectuals in nations undecided between communism and capitalism in Europe and Latin America. While the Marshall Plan was planned to meet Europe's physical needs, what we needed was a cultural Marshall Plan. Exhibits of traditional art have been touring Europe, but our embassies now ask for something fresh. The United States Cultural Affairs Program commissioned a modern art exhibit. Leroy Davidson chose 117 modern paintings, bought us for the State Department, and the title us Advancing American Art. We were a testament to democracy. That meant that some of us were pro-capitalist, but others could be interpreted as anti-capitalist. And because of our freedom, that was all right. In 1946, we were put on display for the first time at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. One of my closest friends in the exhibit was A Dark Thought by Warner Drews. Because the artist painted such a gloomy moment, Dark Thought herself was always depressed. I, on the other hand, was painted to be dramatic, and I was swept away by the fame and fortune of our international tour. Oh, that was the time of my life. Prague, Czechoslovakia, 1947. Hello, Czechoslovakia! Don't you just hush? You're making me sick. Again. How can you be so grumpy? Don't you miss a mistake? We're in Prague. <laughs> Fancy American art. We're fresh, <laughs> modern, abstract. It's a martial plan for the mind. A revolution in diplomacy. We're going to be famous. Great, Georgia O'Keefe, you are getting under my brush strokes. I'm going to go eat some of that abstract fruit. The president of Czechoslovakia has been here for more than an hour. Wasn't he only supposed to stay for 15 minutes? That's exciting. He must like me. Listen. I heard them talking, the guards. America is bringing us home. Some magazine called Look ran an article about us, blaming the government for using taxpayer money to buy us. It was entitled, Your Money Bought These Paintings. They're saying we're un-American. They're saying we're too modern. They're saying our artists are capitalists. I mean, wait, they're capitalists and they're saying that our artists are communists. How hypocritical can you get? Aren't we supposed to represent a new kind of art? Aren't we supposed to represent freedom of expression? And now America's telling us we're too modern, and that we're not free. Washington, D.C., summer 1948. International leaders loved us. All but a few artistic journals in the United States loved us. Most of the popular press loved us. And with a small section of conservative artists, a single powerful group of publications, one negative reaction led to another until finally Congress brought us home. What a tragedy of errors. Traditional artists led by the conservative American Artists Professional League, or AAPL, resented their exclusion them, modern art meant all current art. But since the more traditional side of current art had already been displayed in previous government art exhibitions, American embassies abroad requested examples of the new abstract styles. 
Nevertheless, the AAPL bombarded the public with criticisms of every aspect of advancing American art, using blatant congressional connections, an impending election, a letter writing campaign, and news articles. Our modern art was called the incomprehensible, ugly, or absurd works of a lunatic French. We were a lopsided representation of America purchased with American taxpayer dollars. We were meant to show the world how open America is. And when our artists freely painted what they wished, we were labeled a red art show. McCarthyism at work. After we were recalled to America, we were sent to government committees. We were ridiculed by the very government who sent us abroad in the first place. And finally, sent to the War Assets Administration for disposal. Those in the government who tried to stand up for us ended up losing their jobs. Maybe if we had been allowed to continue touring the world. Maybe we could have performed the perspectives of influential intellectuals. But instead, America's reactions toward us proved the hypocrisy of our own nation. We failed. We're junk. That is all we are. Junk. Fall 2012. That's when our story started to fall apart, and we were packed away in boxes as surplus more assets. All 117 of us were sold for five and a half thousand dollars. Just thinking of that option still hurts. George O'Keefe's Hill went for fifty dollars. Hunger by Ben Shaw was sold for sixty dollars. Ironically enough, Hunger is now the most familiar social realist painting of the 1940s, and it's worth one thousand times what it was sold for. Looking back at so surprising that it was in America, of all places, in which we were rejected. I guess in the heat of the controversy, reaction, compounded reaction, until finally the whole cultural affairs program just blew up in our faces. Wasn't it less than a year later that, look, the magazine that started the article that started all the arguing, didn't they publish a poll of the 11 best painters in the U.S.? Yeah, and seven of them all had at least one painting in advancing American art, which does make me wonder. Did people's reactions change? Or did we start a reform in the way people view freedom of expression? Well, I know we made at least a few people realize that what was important about us wasn't what other people thought of us. It was that, in America, people should be allowed to create art like us, regardless of what other people think. No. When America recalled us, it sent the opposite message. That we weren't really free. Ever since we were rejected in Washington, our thought seems to have just given up. I guess it was hard for her to see that some of the complaints were reasonable. Many people find modern art difficult to appreciate, and it's understandable that they wouldn't want to stand up for us. But none of that would have mattered if people had realized before they reacted that we were supposed to be a diplomatic move, not an artistic statement. Well, anyway, you're here now, and you're listening. And you, the Americans still learning from our mistakes, you're part of our legacy. It's beautiful, isn't it? The Jewel Colin Smith Museum of Fine Art in Auburn, Alabama. Remember the auction? Well, Auburn University and three other public universities bought parts of the collection each. That kind of draw revolutionized Auburn's interest in art, both at the university and in the community. This museum was created partly to house us, and now, 100 of us have been brought together here so the world can hear our story. You know, I think that overall, our story ends well. 
While our mission to reform world perspectives of American culture was a tragedy of errors, the complex chain of reactions demonstrated a need for reform in the relationship between government and art and in the way we view freedom of expression. And in that, our legacy will live on.